it looks like just a big block of cobble. But this mob grinder is going to solve all the problems you're having with mob farms not working for you. Don't you go anywhere, I'm going to show you how to make it. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, depending on what time you're watching this next episode from me, Alamance, and today we are going to make a mob grinder. We are going to be giving you a way to get loads and loads of mob drops, saving you having to wander around smacking them over the head with your diamond sword with lots of enchantments on. Yeah, it's going to be, I hope, a really simple one though. We're not going to go for one of these mad skills, completely mental, four million blocks big. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to do a modular one. So what this is, so you can kind of move from having a starting with a small one as your resources start to grow and then you can build on it and build on it and build on it and build on it and I, the idea is that it grows with your world and that way you get more mob drops every time you put a new module on it it's really really simple isn't it so what we're going to do is we are going to crack on with it if you enjoy it please do remember to slap the like button because it really helps out the channel and i really appreciate it and it doesn't cost you anything so let's crack on with the tutorial <laughs> So for this build, you are going to need a variable amount of resources. And the reason for that is, is it's modular. You can do as few or as many as you want. But generally speaking, you're going to need per level, eight dispensers, 16 repeaters, eight redstone dust, eight buckets of water, and 264 block of choice. I've used cobblestone because it's obviously really, really easy to get in survival. Then on top of that, you're going to need about another 200 cobble, a button, 12 redstone torches, 120 ladders, a minimum of 12 cobblestone slabs, but depending on how high you go, you're going to need more than that, 16 to 20 hoppers, 2 to 8 chests, more redstone dust. I'd suggest having a whole stack of redstone dust in your back pocket because you won't get for all of it, and a boat because you've got to get out to the middle of the ocean. Now, when you do a mob grinder, you have got some challenges. The problem you've got is mob cap. There is only so many mobs that can spawn in the world at any one time. So you want to be building your mob grinder as far away from as many other spawns as you possibly can to make sure you minimize the number of other spawns. The idea it works, if you are within 128 blocks of a spawnable block, that's your player, not the mob spawner, then you will potentially have the possibility of a mob spawning and that removes a space in your mob cap for mobs that can spawn in your mob farm. Quite simple right? So you want to be standing at least 129 blocks away from the nearest spawnable block that is not your mob farm. Does that make sense? So get as far away from caves or even land as you possibly can to make sure that you can't have any mobs spawning in your um, area except for in the mob farm and the best way to do that is over the deep ocean now I know sometimes it takes a little bit of time to find a deep ocean and if you can't then that's fair enough you just have to light up all the caves and the land around you to make sure there isn't any spawnable block within that 128 block sphere around you but I find the easiest way to do it is out in the ocean another thing that you've got to make sure is that when you do go out and do that don't stick a bed down and sleep in it when you're AFK or whatever, because that's going to mess it up. Mobs will not spawn within about 40 blocks of your spawn point. So don't do that. That would be daft. I think we need to get out into that sea. It looks lovely. So you've got yourself out to the place that you want to be putting your farm. And there's nothing that you can attach any blocks to. So what you need to do is get yourself a lily pad. Dismount your uh, boat. Get yourself a lily pad and just whop it down next to your boat. Then what you can do is shove yourself a block on top of that lily pad and get rid of the lily pad and put a block on the bottom of that first block. So you've got now a block that is kind of one block away from the top of the water. Then I want you to build a five by five square. It doesn't have to be five by five, but I just like five by five because it gives a little bit more room for you to be able to maneuver. And on these three, take them out. That is going to act as your harbour, if you like, and that is going to mean that your boat isn't going to get knocked about by squids whenever you basically park it and the squids start messing around with your boat. Because if your boat goes wobbling off somewhere, you ain't going to be able to get to it and you'll be stranded in the middle of a desert island and you'll end up losing loads of weight and having to eat fish and that's not what anybody wants in their life. So we're going to put 
a single block in the middle. And we're going to put a ladder on that block. And we're going to repeat the process, single block and a ladder. And single block and a ladder, single block and a ladder, single block, whoops, and a ladder, like that. And then we're going to create a little kind of boarding section here, which puts you up and gives you a little bit of an area there. Then we are going to carry on up. Now, from this point, if you imagine you have got that C, the default height for the C is 63 blocks. If you're in the deep ocean, the bottom of that ocean is going to be anywhere from 35 to 40 on the wire, which means that you've got, let's say, 20 blocks of water between you and the bottom of the sea. That means of the 128 sphere that I mentioned earlier, you've got 20 of it's already gone because the hostile mobs are not going to be spawning in the water unless it's a guardian because you've been daft enough to build this near a sea monument, which would be really silly, wouldn't it? But if not, squids don't count. So fish don't count in 113. All you need to worry about is hostile mobs. You could argue that on the bottom of the sea, there could be some drowned from the 1.13 uh, update or whatever the console and PE versions of the 1.13 is. But that's OK because they're right at the bottom of that um, area. So you can count approximately 20 blocks of free space underneath you right here. Now, we've just gone up five, which means 25 blocks of free space. So we want to be getting up to 128 blocks away. So you want to build 103 more blocks with this block being the first one, uh, second, third, whoops, third, fourth, fifth, etc., etc. You get the point. And then what you do is get yourself a ladder on each and every one of those so you can go up and down. So I'll be back when I finish that. So we are now up on Y173, which is about 110 blocks above the surface of the water. Now, what that means is we are 130 blocks, give or take, from the bottom of that ocean at least, which means even drowned and that that are wandering around on the bottom of the sea in 113 are not going to affect us. They're not going to be spawning. We are out of the way. So what we've got is a ladder that goes all the way down to the bottom. And then we're going to decide what side are we going to put our drops. So we're going to have drops coming at us. So if you look down, I'll just shift click, or we're going to fall over. That's where the, um, the boat is. You can see the orientation is to that side of us. So you probably want to be having your drops coming out the back like that, which is to the side of the boat. That's the direction that we're going to have our drops going in. So now we know that, we can put a button there. So what that is, that's our activation button. And then on the other side of that activation button, the same block, we are going to put a redstone torch so you can see so when we press that button the redstone torch turns off that's because we are powering that block and because the block's powered it's turning off the redstone on that completely and what we're going to do is we're just going to naturally carry on blocking up but we're going to put a block to the side which is over the top of that redstone torch we're then going to come up to and put another block we're going to put a redstone torch on that which you can see turns off and that's because that redstone torch is powering this block and because of the not gate effect that turns off that redstone torch so that turns on the redstone torch here because that's not on so that's not got any power on it and that redstone torch is on if i then turn that off you can see it just for a short period of time turns off that torch which then removes the power from that block which allows this one to power which powers this block which turns that one off so you get the idea and then what are you going to do is you're going to continue to build this redstone torch tower up another 25 blocks with um, this block being number one. So one, two, three, four. So we're five so far. I'll be back when I've done 25. So that's six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, etc., etc. And I'll be back when it's done. Right, so we've got that tower finished. I've put this ladder here. This ladder is optional. If you do this by towering up, if you make this tower by towering up, you don't actually need the ladder because you can lob yourself off the side and fall in the water, get back down again when you finish, and you can build the bit at the top just doing that. But if you want to be able to go up there again, put a ladder in, and that makes it dead easy. So we've got torches going up. You can see up, 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 up. This is 25 blocks above that platform, and the top torch is off. Now, this is really important, people. The top torch must, must, must be off. If it is on, it gets all messed up. 
and you don't want that. Now remember, we are going to have our drop zone coming out the back of this area here, which means that we want to be building from the top of here and having a drop in that direction. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a block on top of that and we're going to start to build up a platform. Now this is where you've got some options. Now you can, if you wish, you can have this platform go in um, eight wide or six wide or 12 wide. It really comes down to whatever resources you happen to have at the time. I'm going to have it eight wide. So that's four, five, six, seven, and eight. And we want the drop to be in this direction and we don't want it to be too far. So just, you can see it's overhanging just one. Then we're going to add a block to the side here, come out two, a block to the side here, come out two, and then we're going to build another row, which leaves a big kind of gap of two there. Okay, so then what we're going to go here is we're going to go one, two, three, and we need to come out four, five, six, seven, eight, then nine, ten, and then we want to fill this all in. There we go. So we've got one eight by ten platform with kind of an hole at the end there. We then want to build up the edge of this coming along this way, like that. Same on this side, build up the edge, like that. So you can see, so here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten blocks before we have um, the hole, which means we want to come two blocks in. And with that two blocks, you want to shove yourself a dispenser. Two blocks. So this block here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got eight across. You can actually do this as few as three across. I don't recommend it. I think less than six has a real effect on your spawnability, but you can do it. It does work with six. It does work with five. It does even work with four. Three and less, not so much. Put a repeater into the back of each of those dispensers. Now it must be dispensers, must not be droppers. And then put a row of stone along the back of that. Put a row of stone along the back of that and then a second one like that. And then get another lot of repeaters going in there and some redstone coming along the side of that. Now we'll come back to that in a minute because what we now want to do is build up this, um, we're basically making ourselves a cave, uh, a, a hole within which we're going to spawn our mobs. And this needs to be, these walls need to be three high. And the reason they need to be three high is not because we're trying to get Enderman to spawn in here because this is um, not going to work for Enderman, but this third high is basically the, the roof and potentially, depending on how many modules you do, the floor of the next module. So we're just going to build this up so we've got a two, basically a, a room that is too tall with the ceiling on the third block. Now this is the tricky bit if you're in survival. You're going to need to kind of pull yourself out onto a platform here because what you want to do is you want to get yourself a rim that comes around whoop, don't fall off your platform, that comes around this way and that lip needs to come down from the edge of your fall a further three blocks. And don't fall off your platform like I do. I've got, I'm a terrible driver, it's just awful. Here. Right, so come around here, uh, that is two blocks and this last one is three blocks. Okay, like that. And what you should then find is when you're in here, if I pull up the F3 screen, when you're in here, the light level is zero right by the dispensers. And if you walk forwards, you can see that light level is going up two, three, four, five, six. And I'm now as far over to the edge of the can and the light level is seven. And that's fine. It can be up to seven. So you can see that we have got a nice little pod. It's not very pretty, I grant you, but it is a nice little pod that will act beautifully as a spawning chamber. And then we've just got to connect up the uh, redstone, which is actually not too tricky. We kind of come out to the edge of this here. 
this is the area that we want to connect it to and we're basically going to step it down like that and we want to bring we use half slabs it's slightly more um, efficient in terms of resources so we're going to bring our slabs there let's turn the f3 screen off there shall we and the slabs are going to come out this way and connect up to that block there so you can see you come out to the edge of the platform and build a, a, just a basic row of that and then that connects up there now you have got more than 15 redstone dots so we've got one two three four five six seven eight that makes nine right there that's 10 that's 11 that's 12 that's 13 that's 14 that's 15 so you've got not enough power to get all the way there so what you need to do is on that one there shove yourself a repeater and that will oomph up the power right to the end and to get your redstone all the way along to that last torch there and when you turn that redstone system on what that's going to do just to explain it to you here again that is going to push in the button here is going to turn off that torch which turns on that turns off turns on turns off turns on turns off turns on turns off turns on turns off and turns on which is why this top one has to be turned off at the moment which will send a redstone signal through this redstone wire through the repeater which will boost it to go all the way up here and along all of these which will power all of these repeaters which will power all of these blocks which will power all of these repeaters which will power all of the dispensers and then inside the dispensers you are going to keep yourself just a single bucket of water so let's put a bucket of water in all of those we're going to just literally do one like that right click and shift click on there right click shift click right click shift click right click shift click right click shift click and because i'm a complete wally i didn't get enough buckets right click and oh, wrong one. so we've got a full house of water inside there so if we now come in here you'll see the water is off if we then power this torch here and we can do it dead easy just remove it. that sends a little pulse through there the water is then because the power comes all the way through see they're all powered the water is then dispensed which i'll show you is there and it goes all the way to the edge that doesn't go over if that redstone torch then big powers which we can just put by putting this torch back that sparks up another redstone signal turns that off and the water should go so that's not the way to do it is it i've now got to send another pulse this is why there we go so that will turn the system off so if you come up inside here the water's now gone so you can see that so we're going to control that using a button which will on one push of the button turn the whole system um off or on sorry to put the water out and then the second button will turn the water off so i'm going to demonstrate that just by putting a button on this block which will power this and turn that off so you can see that turns it off and then it turns back on again which is what we're trying to achieve that means the water's inside press the button again and that pulls the water back in so dead simple right let's get rid of that button so we don't confuse ourselves and that means this button down here does exactly the same thing push the button water i know i'm doing it i'm over killing it i know but i just want to make sure you see what i'm talking about then push the button and the water's gone awesome that's what we're trying to achieve now that is a functional mob spawner now it will work just like that but that's all well and good but we want to be able to collect all the drops don't we and the way we're going to do that is because we know that this tower here and this hole here this hole is basically from the tower it comes out one and it has one two three on one side and one two three four on the other so if we come down to the bottom <coughs> And we've got this platform here we know that we can come out one and this next bit will be where our drop is here so it's got to come out one two three that side and one two three four that side and we know that this area here that i'm outlining now is 
directly underneath the drop zone for that. So anything that falls out of that hole is going to fall into this drop zone here. Yeah, dead simple. So this is where we are going to create our collection system. So all we're going to do, we're going to have nothing more complicated than some hoppers. And all we're going to do, just to start off with, we are going to pop a hopper going into that block there, just there, can you see it? So the hopper goes there. And then we're going to shift click hoppers, basically into any other hopper on the system. And what that will allow us to do is to make sure that any drop that goes into, that comes down here, automatically makes sure that any hopper will push stuff to this hopper here. We then remove that. Just remove it. That's all we need because we don't need that. Now you've got a bit of a choice here. You could, if you wish, put your chest right there. Just a single chest. But that will fill up very, very quickly. So what you want to do in reality is you want to create yourself a multiple chest system. And the way we're going to do that is to basically come down the bottom here. I want my chests to start to fill up here, like here. So as I can just, in my boat, I can come along and just grab the stuff. So I'm going to put, where's my chest? There's a chest. So I'm going to put a double chest there. I'm going to shift a double chest on top and another double chest on top. Whoops, I'm not going to go under the water. And finally, another double chest on top. Then, what we can do is get another hopper, shift click a hopper into that, which has got, you can see, it's opening there, and then put shift click a hopper into that, which means that hopper points into that hopper, and that means that hopper points into the hopper below it, which shoots stuff into the chest. And then what you can do is underneath that hopper, you can just put a, a hopper going into each chest underneath. And what will happen, the way hoppers work, is the stuff will go to the bottom chest first, it will fill up that bottom chest, then it will go to the second chest, then it will go to the third chest, then it will go to the fourth chest, if you need it. But ultimately, you're probably fine that if you're down there really going for it, you may not fill up all four chests, it's entirely up to you, but it's a really simple system. And that is one module. Now I would suggest for best results to build at least two modules. So that means you're going to be building another module coming out this way, like that. That's effectively the floor of the second section. And we're going to be building this bit out, Oops. like that, all the way around. This bit here is where, where's me dispensers? So this bit here is where the dispensers go. There, 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 there. And we will need our repeaters going into the dispensers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Remember we did it eight. And we're gonna also have from here, so this is block one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We know that is the gap, so that can go two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the gap that can go. And we build up the wall all the way around like that. Get rid of those like that. Build this wall too high. And then put the ceiling on again. Exactly the same way. We're just going to fill this ceiling. And there you go. Now it's not very pretty. I grant you, I'm not building a pretty mob farm right now. This is not the objective of this to be pretty. And you can obviously jazz it up, and perhaps I will jazz it up. But as it stands right now, it is simply functional. So we put in, again, um, exactly the same as we do in the bottom row. Repeaters all the way along there. Getting redstone all the way along here. Like that. Now, so what we need to do is we need to get the signal from here up to here at the same time that this relieves a signal. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to get a block out the side of that. We're then going to come out to the side here and we want to basically get a half slab on the top level of the block above it. Does that make sense? And then a half slab on the top level of the block above that, which means that when we put 
redstone like that, it all connects up. And what that what happened there is when this signal comes along, so doo -doo 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 -doo, it goes up, up, and does all of that as well. But again, we need to be careful because look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. We have basically got not enough, not enough um, redstone signal to reach where we want to reach. And that's not good enough. So what we can do here is we can get rid of that. We can put that like that and get like that. Now, because that is a repeater, that will charge that block. And that block will then light that redstone and off it goes. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And that is enough. We will get signal into all of them strong enough to release the water. Oh, the water. We almost didn't do it, did we? So let's get some water. Again, we need eight blocks of water. There we go. Fill eight buckets up with water. Empty these guys into these dispensers like that and then we just need to test the system now I recommend testing the system in the simplest way possible which is putting some power into the block that you're going to be powering so you can do that very very simply by where should we put it? let's put a redstone torch oh that's not worked hang on what am I doing right, let's put the redstone back there we want to be Where's the button? I'm using redstone tools for you, foolish man. You want to use a button on the side that, and that powers the whole lot up. Did you see? And then press the button again, and that unpowers the whole lot. So let's just check the water. So that water is now turned on, and you can see it's turned on across both chambers. Press the button again, come back to the chambers, and the water is turned off in both chambers. So, and then you can carry on doing that really as high up as you want to go if you want to do another pod and another pod and another pod you absolutely can just as a little point for all the levels above two so three and up you're going to have a problem with signal strength so what you need to do is rather than come out the way we have with that second level with a single step onto one block we need to come out a second block and basically tower up from there so you can see what we've got the, the previous system goes up to there. We have then got another half slab above that top level. Has to be a half slab, otherwise it cuts off that signal. Another half slab there, another half slab there, then a block, then all the runs. And on that block, rather than it being redstone, put a repeater and that'll make sure you've got enough signal to get all the way across. And you need to do exactly the same system if you do a fourth, a fifth, and a sixth. If you look here, we are at 208. So we've got nearly 50 blocks of height left to be able to do more and more of these modules. And theoretically, if you wanted to, you could even have them coming out the other direction. So if you can imagine, it would mirror, and you could have repeaters coming out that way as well, which would have a block, which have a repeater, and basically another module coming out in this direction with another collection system going down to the bottom. So you could double it up and make it even larger if you wanted to. It's completely modular and it is completely down to you how big you make it. You can make it little with just a couple of modules or you can make it big with loads of modules and it's completely up to you. Now, one problem you may well have up here in 113, you might not, but you might, is the Phantom. The Phantom can get you on this platform, obviously. So what you can do is you can build yourself inside this platform just a little bit with some glass or some other kind of block like this. There you go. But make sure you can still press the button. And that way you are protected from any nasties that might want to come along and eat your face because face eating is not welcome around here. So what we're now going to do is we're going to, I'm just going to get rid of this because it's in my way, but um, in, for the sake of the video, I'm removing these surrounding areas, but you might want to make the platform slightly larger or incorporate um, the side into it or something. As long as you don't get in the way of that thing up there, you are going to be fine. You can incorporate anything you want. So we're just going to have a little bit of a press to see what has happened up there since we just lobbed that glass around. I've got three modules. No more, just three modules. It's a small grinder, this one, that you could literally have dozens of them if you wanted to. So we're just gonna press this button and see what happens. 
So that's released the water. And you can see we're getting mobs falling out of that as the water pushes them out. We've got a few mobs there. Yep, yeah, they're still coming. The spiders don't clog the system up because he says as this spider clearly managed to get itself on there. But spiders generally don't clog the system up. I've never ever seen I've made this thing a hundred times. I've never ever seen a spider do that. In the comments below, if you experience spiders literally chucking webs like Spider-Man like that, let me know because I'd be very interested to see that. I have not experienced that before ever, ever, ever. Very, very interesting. But generally speaking, because it's a complete drop, the spiders don't have a problem. Maybe what you want to do is build the entire platform one more block in that direction and that would definitely stop those spiders. That's a new one. There you go. One, one brought that direction and that will sort that out. Or maybe you just remove this entire column here because you don't need to get up to the top anymore. That's also an option. So let's come back here. We've got no water in the system again. So that's working quite nicely. And the spider falls again and eventually dies. So you do get the death of the spider eventually, which is always good. So what do we get with that single go? Just one press of the button we got actually not too bad we got an hour a couple of bones some flesh gunpowder and some string that was just a single go so you can imagine if you had multiple goes you could end up with quite a lot of nice stuff and you could just sit there spend an hour or two just whacking that button uh, give it like 30 seconds between each press and actually you probably find you get yourself a nice lot of mobs and that's a fairly easy reasonable grinder for you to add to your survival world you just need some cobble a little bit of redstone and some water. It's nothing more complicated than that. Now the one thing that you are going to need to do is you're going to need to just place half slabs all around the top and what that is going to do is it's going to make the entire platform unspawnable and you then have very few spawnable blocks anywhere near and that means that you can't have during the night time any mobs spawning outside of your chambers because if they spawn on top here that's no good you can't then farm them and they're going to be taking up space that could be taken up by someone inside the grinder now i've done this entirely of cobble it is probably the most unattractive build i've ever done in my entire life it actually makes my teeth itch this thing looks so unattractive but i would be challenging you right now this is a challenge to you the viewer can you make this mob farm look really really good i would like to see what you've done tweet me at avo minecraft and let me know what you have done with this mob farm to make it look loads loads better to actually make it look properly lovely as a mob farm don't forget these blocks here are also spawnable get half slabs on them too and that way they won't cause you any problems same here get a half slab on all these ones yes it's only one high but spiders can come on a one high space they theoretically shouldn't be able to get on there but who wants to run any risks right let's not run the risks because risks don't need running we're going to get all that along here just to make it completely sorted there you go there are zero spawnable blocks anywhere within this system at all other than inside when you are standing on this platform and that is what you want that is perfect and there you've got it one slightly different looking mob grinder it is kind of a little bit made up but it uses the current mechanics and it solves a lot of the problems i've got a few mob grinder tutorials on the channel that maybe are challenged in a few ways because of different updates in redstone and in the way mobs spawn have caused them to not work quite so effectively this tutorial addresses all of those problems. It addresses the mob cap problems. It addresses the problems of light getting into the system. It addresses everything you should need to be able to get plenty of mob drops for your survival Minecraft world. It also addresses the fact that actually it's not that hard to make in survival. And whilst it does use an awful lot of cobble blocks, it don't use much else. So if you've enjoyed this video, please do remember to slap that like button. It really helps out the channel. And also it lets me know that you're enjoying the videos and I'll carry on making them. And also if you've not done it already, please do hit that subscribe button and the notifications bell. It'd be great to know that you're in my sub club and the notification squad. And I look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.